There were people who got um, either all or the majority of this right. So I want to um, I want to look at this because again, people were intimidated by this. I can almost guarantee you'll get a question of some variety like this in your question 15 or 16 in your actual HSC. So don't freak out. Just take one part at a time and walk through it slowly. The first part's really easy. It's really easy. You just had to look at the, the factorials and just tease it apart just a little bit, okay? Have a look. When you have a look at this result, have a look at the result in part one. Have a look at the numerator. What's missing from this numerator? It's all of the n minus k and following terms, right? Which you can see here. Once you write that on the bottom, it's really easy to cancel it off the top. Like that. You see that? It's not hard to get rid of. Look at that n minus k plus 1 is kind of a giveaway. It's the, it's the term before n minus k. Once you've done that, part 2, right? Um, you, you start with this line. Please start with this line. Like it's part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4. We're trying to help you out. We're trying to guide you through. I was amazed how many people, even if you didn't get part 1, just ignored part 1 and tried to do part 2 off something else. Okay? There's a crucial step in there, in that when you have a look at this numerator, when you have a look at how many terms there are going to be, there are going to be the exact number of terms that correspond to these guys on the denominators. There's going to be k of them, right? So once you do that, you had to line up these terms because that allowed you to work with this limit here. Okay, once you line up the terms, you pair them up, numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator, every single one has got its matching pair. Each one of them, when you evaluate the limit, I don't care how big that k is going to get. N it could be n minus a million. When n, n gets to infinity, it's still going to go towards 1. Okay? So all of these guys, every single one of these approaches 1. Okay? You can't simply say, just because it should, this whole thing is going to approach 1. You haven't showed that. Right? It's a show question. So once you've dealt with each one, you can see, all right, cool. Um, this whole part here in the beginning, it just vanishes away because they're all ones, right? And then you can just evaluate the sigma notation. Um, you've got these two, which both equal to one, and that's where this mysterious two appears, okay? Um, so, that was part two. Part three, most of you got the free mark, which was testing the base case. Good on you, okay? Now, where, where did we fall down, okay? Um, can I just... Please put an emphasis on this. Um, I, I had to take some Panadol in the middle of marking this question, okay? Because we, we, it was almost textbook. All the things we could do wrong. We did proofs that went like around that I had to follow like a maze. We, we didn't even say... We didn't even say where we used the assumption. Like people popped it in and it didn't tell me that that's what you were doing, okay? That's like the main thing about that. Please don't do this in your extension one HSC exam. Um, after you, I sorted through all those errors and um, tried to see the logic that you had, there were two problems. We didn't manipulate the given result, right? Or we sort of did something like this. We went straight from here to here, right? Or here to here. And we didn't say why. It depends on the domain of k, right? If, for example, k is like, k could be a negative number or a fraction or anything like that. Your, your line of argument, your logic, it falls apart like a house of cards. It has to be greater than, or at least it has to be a positive integer. A lot of you didn't even refer to that at all, okay? Others of you, just quickly before I get to your question, Jack, um, they said something like this, right? But they had something more complicated there, and they just said it. They didn't actually reason through why it was the case. Okay, so um, if you miss that, like you can see, I I'm invoking that to to make this substitution. If you miss that, you didn't show me why, you lost that mark. Everything was about the logic of the proof. Question. I just wanted to clarify in between the inequality. Yep. Is it supposed to, um, if you just want to simplify one of the Sure, that's a great question because uh, a few people did that. Yep. So, so the question is something like this: If I have like x equals uh, x, and then I'm like, oh, but x is is less than y, so I should get rid of that, right? And then I'm like, oh, but y is equal to something else. Like maybe you're like, I, I have some substitution I can make. Maybe it's like z. Okay. Now, 
do I write an equals or do I write a lesser than on the next line? Okay, the answer is you should write a lesser than. Let me tell you why. These lines, yes, I know they all fit together, but we have forgotten because, you know, we're trying to save time, right? We've forgotten that really this is shorthand for a whole bunch of X's over there on the left hand side. We stop writing them because nothing is changing. But by not having them there, we're just trying to imply there are x's there, okay? Now, I think you can immediately see, if you put the x there and you realize the x is implied there, clearly this is not the case, right? So we've gotten confused between the logic that gets me from one line to the other versus what does the whole line mean when we don't write the left-hand side, we forget what it means, okay? So really, there's a left-hand side, left-hand side, left-hand side continually um, implied, which is why I can pull it in at the end. Okay, so that's what I would suggest. Then you made the proof. Okay, last part of this, um, I kid you not, I shed a tear because um, this is actually, this, this guy over here, this limit is a very famous limit. It's equal to E. So if you said it was equal to one, I found, I found a pillow to go and punch because it was like this travesty of missing out an important mathematical truth. You, you can't say it's equal to one just because, oh, this guy should approach zero. Well, yes, he does approach zero, but this guy approaches infinity. So these guys are counteracting each other and they meet exactly to provide you the number E. Okay. The proof of this was not to get E. It was just to use this guy over here using this result. You can translate all of that factorial business over there on the right hand side into a very nice simple GP. And so you use the limiting sum. Um, that gives you uh, this guy over here. There's my limiting sum formula. And, and that's why you get three. Okay? Question? Um, could you just state that that equals to e versus less than e? <laughs> Could you state that it was equal to e? It says cancel otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you know what? I'd almost like you to try, <laughs> but but honestly, um, I I I wouldn't because clearly that's not what they are trying to assess, um, and it's is not abundantly clear from the limit itself. Even though it's a famous result, there are lots of famous results here, and we're we're going through like why they are what they are. So yeah, no, sorry, not not a quotable result. As much as it pains me, it's not. Okay. Okay, can we do the last final bit? They'll be, they'll be very quick, I promise. Okay, um, the integration was overall well done here. The most common errors were, number one, um, we just got lost in the length of this and in the, the algebra shifting around, okay? Um, a very, very common error was right in here. We got these partial fractions out, awesome. We were so focused on the partial fractions that we forgot that there's reverse chain rule here. So, so the derivative of that 3 minus t is negative 1. We forgot that part, which obviously mucked about with our definite integral. Um, secondly, people got to this line and said, uh oh, that was don't know what to do there. I know a new substitution. Okay. Now, that was problematic for two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, the question tells you what substitution you're supposed to use. And secondly, by doing that, you almost invariably got it wrong because you made it so hard. You made it so hard for yourself. So um, it was very difficult to get the mark successfully from there. Uh, a third log two was what we were looking for. Okay. Um, question C um, was my, well done, you got to the end. Why don't you calm down a little? This is your warm down, okay? Um, now, this was exam technique. You had reading time. You had reading time. Go to this question, look at it. Don't get put off by the diagram. Look at what's asked of you. This is simple stuff. Equation, equation yeah, equa this is a classic real. Equation of a tangent, showing something's on a circle. Look at that. It's really easy to show something's on a circle. And then part three, parallel lines, really? Parallel lines? Just give me the gradients and that was the easiest mark in the paper.